Hey guys, it's Paul. Hey, I just wanted to talk about something real quick, um, and I'm hoping that this is this is something that helps. Uh, one of the this is this this topic in particular is how to get uh, more life out of our harmonicas, or um, uh, more more particularly, how to how to um, not kill our <laughs> our harmonicas. Um, one of the most common complaints that I, I have heard um, from various individuals, a lot of different people, like, well, not a lot of different people. Let me rephrase that. One of the most common complaints that some of my friends who own businesses who sell harmonicas get are the five draw is bad. Um, this read, the, the reeds are weak, or, you know, this and that and the other thing. Um, and, and I go through them. I blow through my harmonicas, you know, I'll buy one and, and inside of two weeks it's dead, you know, or it's, you know, they're junk or whatever. Um, I don't know where these harmonicas are coming from, but I have to tell you, I have, I have been buying harmonicas for a very long time and I probably right now have about 140, 150 of them from all different manufacturers, um, three, four sets of, of various, uh, brands, and I, I can count on one hand how many times I've gotten a bad harmonica. I got to thinking about this, and one of the things that I realized was um, the, the, the five draws, the most common complaints, the most common um, you know, issue, draw, a read that um, seems to surface uh, in these complaints. So uh, five draw is obviously one of those reads that doesn't, you're not supposed to be able to bend. Now, can you get inflections on it? Absolutely. Uh, but you're not supposed to bend that reed. What this comes down to, in my opinion, uh, and you can try this. Uh, you don't have to. I mean, this is just an opinion, but I've, I have tested it. Um, technique, you know, armature. What happens is if you have uh, an obstruction in the airway, when you bend a reed, all you're doing is manipulating the airway. You're, you're, uh, when we bend, all we're doing is we're manipulating the airway. We're actually placing an obst we're obstructing the airway in a way that makes the reed respond. For reeds that aren't supposed to bend, this can be death. Um, so what we have to look at is our armature and how we're playing regularly. If you are creating tension in your playing and your armature is creating a blockage in the airstream, you're going to go through reeds, you're going to go through harmonicas a lot faster. Um, I am known to carry a harmonica in my... I've always got a harmonica within like five feet, but I carry one in my pocket all the time. And I, you know, my special 20s especially, and the, any honer harp that I have, with the exception of maybe... Uh, a couple of the marine bands that I got that were bad to begin with, um, they were leaky. You know, not bad reeds, but they were leaky. Um, eight, nine months before I have to, you know, do anything to them at all to, to revive them. Um, I'll carry them around in my pocket, uh, play them hour and a half, two hours a day, and I, and I don't go through harmonicas. I really don't. I buy them because I love them, not because I need them. Um, this, uh, well, let's see, this Special 20 right here, this this is a B-flat. I put some different bolts on it because I thought they looked kind of cool. Uh, Rock and Ron's Music for Less sells those. Um, I think he's still got a pretty big stock of them, but they're really nice, and they're stainless, so that means that they don't, they don't rust. Anyway, this harp, I have had this harmonica for nine months, and I've carried it regularly. I've, I've had it for for almost a year, carry it in my pocket, play it hour, hour and a half a day, mess around. Um, and I and I don't go I don't go through harmonicas. Here's what I'm talking about. Five draw. Okay, we'll play the five draw. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exaggerate this a little bit and kind of show uh, how our overture can affect a reed um, like that that's not supposed to bend. Sounds awful. It's thin. Um, the reed is obviously stressed. 
uh, and it's really not supposed to sound like that. This is a free reed instrument, which means that the air has to be, the air should flow in a natural way over the reeds to make them react how they're supposed to. Um, and on the ones that don't bend, uh, that's particularly important. The ones that are able to be bent, you know, the ones that we can get bends out of, you can obviously obstruct the airway enough to get the, the bend. So you can mess around with that all day long, but if you try that on the five draw, um, you're going to go through harmonicas. Uh, so, five draw. That's an obstructed air, airway. I'm going to open it up now. Okay, so what I did was I loosened up, opened up, allowed my armature to widen, took my tongue out of the picture, basically, in, in the air airstream, and allowed the air to flow over the reed freely. If you're not doing this, uh, well, let me, let me rephrase this. If you're going through harmonicas quickly, uh, this could be the reason. It could be one reason. Um, and my suggestion uh, is to record yourself. That's what I did. That's what I still do when I'm learning something new. I record myself because, quite frankly, um, I love to hear how great I sound and all this other crap kind of stuff. And then when I hit record and go back to listen to it, I'm like, holy crap, that's something I need to work on. It's really, you know, that's really something. And, and it's been amazing because you, you grow as a musician a lot quicker. Um, but it also has allowed me to kind of some, some hidden benefits, and this is one of them. I don't go through harmonicas. I, like I said, I don't go through them because I blow the crap out of them. I go through them because just simply because I love them and I like to buy them. Um, so if you're going through harmonicas, please, uh, you know, do yourself a favor. I think this is something, you know, be honest with yourself about it. Say, you know what, maybe it's worth giving it a try. I'll take a listen, see what I'm doing there. And if it sounds thin, if it sounds thin, uh, if it doesn't have that sound, that big... If it's not even and if it sounds thin chances are that's your problem okay um, quality control on this stuff has, has come a long way it really has and uh, you know quite frankly everybody's talking about the manji and they're talking about this and that and the other thing I've gotten some manjis that I wasn't impressed with I've gotten some honers I wasn't impressed with you know they play okay um, I think it's personal preference but one thing that I have learned is that consistently from, from brand to brand, uh, getting a bad one is a rare thing. It's not something that happens a lot, not anymore anyway. Um, I'll give you another example. This is a Lee Oscar D harmonic minor. Um, It's a little different to get used to. Um, I bought reed plates. I, I actually bought two of these in the last couple of days, mainly because I'm working on a Buddy Green thing, which I played a little bit part of. That was called Bubba the Wandering Gypsy. I don't have it down yet. I just started it yesterday, but um, nowhere near having it down, believe me. Once you listen to it, you'll know why. Um, but anyway, I bought uh, I bought two of these. I bought one. Um, I bought one. Put uh, put it put them on a cut put it on a custom comb a Hetrick comb which by the way he doesn't make them anymore uh, mainly because I guess um, you know we as harmonica players I think can place an awful lot of emphasis on the wrong thing when dealing with the people who provide us the services and the products that we need this is a niche market we should really be taking care of those guys. Um, I understand there's quirks and there's all this other kind of stuff, but let me tell you, his combs, as far as I'm concerned, and I've got a bunch of them, um, were probably the best that you could buy at the time. And unfortunately, I can't get them anymore. He got tired of the whole thing. So um, that's what I understand anyway. But uh, hopefully he comes back and says, hey, man, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy sell combs again. 
Um, but anyway, I'm going to get off that rant. But um, I bought two of these. Put a, put the custom comb in, in, the, in the other one and then bought some reed plates. And, and these are the, this one is the one that contains the reed plates. When I put the reed plates in, I heard a coming out of the, the five blow. First, uh, first reaction is, oh, you know, I got a bad one or whatever. Then I, you know, I realized, well, that's a con that's that's something that happens when the reed is not aligned in the slot. So basically, all I did was I took out my handy dandy Lee Oscar toolkit. If you don't have one of these in your harmonica player, I would highly suggest you get one. Okay, comes with all these little neat little things in here, a couple screwdrivers, so on and so forth. See the little wrench in the middle? That's a reed wrench. What I did was I took that reed wrench. Check the check the reed in the slot. Made sure it was straight, which it wasn't perfectly straight. I noticed that there was a little bit of, so I took the reed wrench, gave it a little bit of a tweak, and perfect, not a thing. So it would have been easy for me to say, you know what, I got a bad reed plate, blah 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 blah, but I really didn't. It was just a matter of kind of taking and tweaking a little something here and there. There's a lot of moving parts on these things, and we have to be cognitive of that. So um, I guess my point is. Um, don't be don't be too quick to jump into the the you know jump into the I got a bad harp basket. Take a look at how we're playing technique, uh, and then also understand that with some idiosyncrasies that happen with some of these harmonicas, it doesn't mean it's a bad harmonica. It just might be a little bit a little adjustment thing, okay? And it'll probably save you some money and some time and frustration, okay? Um, if you have questions about your technique, record yourself. Listen back. If you if if it sounds thin, doesn't sound you know like that big tone, that means that we've got some work to do. Okay. If you guys have any questions, just call. Them, let me know. You know, just drop me a line. Um, remember, uh, most of this is opinion. Okay. But it's it's for me. It's I believe it's basically fact based opinion. These are things that I've messed with, um, that I've experimented with. And I, and I would suspect that a lot of the other guys out there, the ones that have been playing a really, really long time and who have never had these kinds of problems, would also agree. So um, take care. Have a good one. And I hope this, uh, this video helps save some frustration for some people out there. Okay? Take care, guys. All right. Bye.